so what's interesting about that to me is the, I think you're suggesting that, that you know, go to the phenomenon as opposed to trying to, to study your phenomenon in, 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 a, in, in an environment like an organization or I guess any, any environment, but we study organizations so that's where we would go. I, I wonder with respect to um, sort of the, the influx of social psychologists into the field, um, and I think the, the, you mentioned kind of the, the development of the field and the professionalization in a way of the field. Uh, where it seems like people have less and less actually direct experience in organizations and with organizations. And, and do you see that as something that we need to, as a field again, sort of think about, well, no, we need to have people have more contact and more interaction in organizations? It's an interesting question. Um, as you know, the field has evolved uh, tremendously. Uh, when I entered the field, most of us had come from kind of hodgepodge backgrounds, okay? Uh, um, I'm one of the few behavioral people at Berkeley who actually has an MBA. Uh, now that's much more unusual. People are coming directly over from psychology or sociology and in fact very common for people to have spent all of their time in, in psychology and then do a postdoc uh, in a business school and they may teach a course like negotiations or something and then and then uh, uh, and then go to work in a business school. So in some sense, in my generation, people had a little bit more life experience, uh, or at least interdisciplinary experience. Right. Everybody has some life experience. And, and there were, uh, in addition to my getting an MBA, there were a number of people who, you know, who had come into the field who had, who had more job, job experience also. So we, we have some people who come in who, who may have spent four or five years doing something else, uh, but we have an increasing number of people moving directly from undergraduate uh, psychology all the way th uh, through graduate school. So, so that, I think, puts people both at an advantage and a disadvantage. It puts them at an advantage is that they're, 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 they're hit the ground running with how to do research that's publishable uh, they've worked in somebody's lab. They've probably gotten a number of publications uh, before they graduate. They know the game of publishing, and they and they are you know can be very very productive in in that sense. Where I think it's it's a liability is if they haven't had too many other experiences other than the university. Uh, they are essentially left with very few tools in the toolbox. They have psychological theory, that is, as we all know, as a hammer that they can go out, at, or a, a microscope that they're looking at the, the world through, but they don't have a lot of other lenses to, to look at the world. And, and uh, I think most of the interesting projects that get done are, uh, get done through uh, some grounding. Uh, people have had life experience in some way that has uh, that that has given them a, per a particular perspective, uh, and if they don't have that experience personally, they go out and spend some time in an organization, and 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 I think that that's what we're missing right now. Um, even the people who are the most prolific lab researchers, I think they should actually if they're intending to understand the phenomena and what happens in an organization and they're, they're applying the lab research to an organization, they don't have to become qualitative researchers and actually go out with notebooks and, uh, and pretend they're a participant observation person or are or, or doing qualitative research. They could just hang around certain organizations and, and watch and get, maybe get permission to, uh, uh, to, to talk to people, especially off-duty. Uh, one of my older colleagues, George Strauss, used to talk about when he wanted to really understand what people felt about their jobs, don't ask them a questionnaire, he would say. He'd say, find out where they're going, what bar they go to after work. Find out where, the, where they go bowling on their bowling team. And, and, you know, and they're sitting there wait, wasting time just kibitzing anyway, waiting for their turn to bowl. And they're much more open in those contexts talking about it. And, and so even if somebody is doing lab research, 
If you've done some of the field work and some of the spade work and try to understand the context, I think it greatly enriches the lab research because as we know, when you're designing lab research, you're kind of like a set director and, uh, and, and you can do anything and you can highlight any particular variables. And so what you choose to highlight is what you're studying and how it and determines how it comes out in a lab in a lab setting and so the the closer connection you have with reality the more likely your lab research is going to evoke important processes or at least processes that that kind of mimic uh mimic reality